Welcome to my channel. Green tea has high amounts of antioxidants and other beneficial properties that can be absorbed through the skin. Therefore, we are using it as an ingredient for our soap making project today. I am using organic green tea and I am adding it to a tea strainer. You can use other types of teas, of course, according to your preference. I let the tea steep for about 20 minutes. If using tea instead of water in cold process soap, the natural sugars in the tea can cause the lye to overheat and scorch the sugars. This is why the tea must be chilled prior to use. I want to be really sure it doesn't overheat and therefore I go ahead and pour the tea into a nice cube tray so I can freeze it overnight. It is the next day and I'm going to prepare all ingredients for the soap making. I decided to go for a green color because I think it fits very well to the type of soap. These are all green micas. For fragrance, I am using fresh eucalyptus from Brambleberry. I weighed out the lye beforehand so that I can slowly add it to the frozen green tea cubes once weighed out according to my recipe. You will find this particular recipe down in the description box below. The next step is to add the lye little by little to the frozen tea cubes and stir. Have your infrared thermometer at hand so you can frequently check your mixture to make sure it doesn't overheat. Don't rush this step and just keep adding the lye little by little and make sure that the lye is fully dissolved. If you are a member of my Buy Me A Coffee page, you will have free access to my recipe cards that show the recipes in grams as well as in ounces for most of my YouTube projects. And you can print them out and laminate them if you want, just like I do. Put them in a little display so you have your recipes always at hand and they don't get wet or dirty. Once you have your cubes fully melted, it's time to add the lye tea mixture, so to speak, to our oils. I like to use a strainer so I can ensure that no undissolved lye gets into the oils. Then I give it a stick blend until I reach an emulsion meaning that there are no oil streaks present in the mixture and everything looks homogenized. It's now time to add our colorant. This is Harlequin Shimmer Mica. Micas can be added directly to the soap batter as opposed to titanium dioxide that needs to be pre-mixed according to the type you have. I am using the water soluble type that I pre-mixed with warm water. You would mix the oil soluble titanium dioxide with a lightweight oil prior to use. I like to add the color little by little until I reach the desired intensity, as you cannot take the color back if it turns out too dark. At this point, I will add the fragrance oil 
and just hand mix it in with a spatula as additional mixing with the stick blender will just make the batter too thick. We are now ready to pour our soap. As you can see, I have my molds here ready on a cutting board. This makes it very easy if you want to move your project around or if you need to shake your mold to even out the soap inside the cavities. This mold comes from Amazon and you will find the link down in the description box below as well as all other items like equipment, tools, ingredients that I am using or recommending. Finally, I am going to give it a spritz with rubbing alcohol to prevent soda ash and the only thing left to do is to wait for about 24 hours and see if it is ready to unmold. It's two days later and I want to see if the soaps are ready. And what I do to determine whether or not they are ready to be taken out of the mold is to stretch the silicone around the soap and see if it releases easily. They also smell very fresh and amazing. There are more playlists for you to check out and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up. Also if you want to see more soap making videos or skincare DIY be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything. I will see you very soon here for another video and in the meantime I wish you a wonderful day. Bye bye!